Hi, I'm Jane Play, I'm creating free video content, teaching people how to trade Betfair absolutely for free. If you're enjoying my videos or you're learning from them, please support me back by hitting the subscribe button and also don't forget to hit the like button on any videos you watch. This will enable me to create more free content for you so you can learn to become a better trader. Best of luck in the markets. So we're looking at this Irish race here. Um, Punch Town, liquidity has been pretty poor pre-race, but what I'm more concerned about is what the liquidity is like in playing. Now, the fact that there's a big field is obviously going to cause us problems because it means if there is decent liquidity, which is not, it's going to be split across those runners. But you see, we already had a fall out. As a few horses fall out the race, that might mean the liquidity is okay. Now, what we've got to look at is, is there anywhere we can put our money in safely? So if the price goes against us, can we get in front of like a few hundred quid? And the answer is here, no. If someone starts playing placing some big bets because this runner starts doing well, it's going to smash through us. Is money getting matched both sides of the book? It is, currently, but is it good enough? How many gaps are in the market up here? You can see, actually, there's quite a steady flow of money coming in. So, although the liquidity is low and there isn't that many, we may be able to get some money through if we wait for the right opportunity, um, get in front of some cash, make sure the market is moving in the way that we want it to, and then put our money down. If it's not doing those things, then the best thing to do is sit on your hands and wait for the next race. Seriously, otherwise you're going to put yourself in a tricky situation. You could get yourself like um, a lay through, you could get yourself your back bet, um, and say that's 20 quid, you could get that match three times. You could get three people to take your bet, um, but you could still not get taken out. You, they might only take 50p, a pound, whatever, and you could be left with 15 quid in the market and the horse goes on to win. So you want to be matched both sides of the book quickly. It's really important to understand that, especially when you're looking at Irish racing. Let's have a little look and see if we can get money through this safely or not. At this stage, I don't know. So you can see there's not a lot of money here. There's money pushing down, queuing up. Whether it's real or not, it doesn't matter to me. You get less fake money in in um, play because um, people get caught out so much. So I would be tempted normally to go in here, and it is moving, but I wouldn't want to go in for too big a stake. So let's just see if we can get, we're early on in the race, look at the race timer. So if we see if we can just get like a tenner through for four ticks. That 300 is going to hold things up. So we want to be matched. We're going to count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten now we're in the market too long so we're going to lower our price by a couple of ticks that hundred's luckily holding things up and we've got out we only took two ticks but we did it the safe way that doesn't mean we can't go in again if the situation changes and i am going to do that in fact we're hit, hitting that halfway stage now you can see there's a bit of money come on the back side there let's have a look at the other runners as well I don't want to focus too much on just one. So again, one, two, three, four, five. It's money coming in, too much money coming in. So we're going to try and see if we can get off for a scratch a little bit higher. There's money, empty positions there, which I like to see. We still need that 60 quid to disappear. So I'm watching that like a hawk. This is the money I'm watching here. Right, okay, it's taking too long, so let's just try and get it out. If it's a scratch, it's a scratch, so it's a scratch. We actually lost a tick there, but it's a scratch because we made a profit on the one before. And you can see that was the right decision to make, and this is how you need to trace it. If you're unsure, count. How long have you been in the market for? Count it in seconds. Now, we've got a little bit of time left, but this is turning into a two horse race very quickly, which I don't really particularly want to be involved in unless I'm getting a lot of ticks and I feel very safe about it. Right, okay. And you see, like, we're out there in less than 10 seconds. And that's what you need to be doing. 10 seconds, when I say 10 seconds, probably 5 seconds because I count quick. You should be counting quick. You don't want to be in long really much more than about five seconds, to be fair. And look at the race timer. We're getting up to the danger zone. So we're just going to stick with 189 in this race. Or are we? If you do go in a little bit late, I mean, this is a longer race, so I probably could get away with it. 
you want to be getting the tick value. And you say we're in and out, and that's it. And now, now we can see we're deep in that red zone, so we definitely don't want to be putting any money in now. So we closed off for a fiver. You see, we did that pretty safely. I did go in a little bit late on French Dynamite, to be fair, but I was very carefully watching the market. I could see that the market was bouncing to the position that I needed for a, a big reward. And obviously, I was down for 10 ticks. I wouldn't go in late for less than 10 ticks. It's not worth it because you will get caught out occasionally. So on the times that you make a profit, you need to make sure your profits are bigger. Um, because if that went through me, we might have been looking at a £20 loss. So that means if we get it right, 10 times, 9 times out of 10, uh, which is probably is about my strike rate, then we need to make sure if we're going to lose 20 quid, we're making a five for all the other times, if that makes sense. So, so that's what we did. We had a pretty much scratch on one, uh, which was the winner in the end. It was the right decision to make. Um, five, market, which happens to be working quite perfectly. We could get our 10 sticks. There was money beneath us. It was pretty safe. So we took it. Normally, we wouldn't go too deep into that red zone if touching it at all. And certainly on short races, you don't want to be going. If you're using the late summer, and you're using my um, settings, which I do provide to everyone, so you know, 80% I cut off the race, but 20% of the race left. Two miles, five furlongs. What's that? Who's good at maths? That's 16, 21 furlongs. So 20% of that, 20% of um, uh, uh, 20 furlongs is obviously four. So you're talking half a mile, over half a mile I'm cutting off. On the longer races, obviously, half a mile is going to be a slower half a mile than what it would be if it's a, a five furlong race, the last four furlong uh, on a sprint. So you've got to bear that in mind. So it was a little bit, was okay. I still cut at least 15% of the race out, um, got the money through, um, but literally because the market was worth working perfectly. On a situation where the market's not working perfectly, you do not want to be going in. Uh, after that red zone and probably not even after that purple zone on a long race and on a short race if it's a very short race uh, of a mile sort of thing you don't really want to be going much off over halfway but there you go I hope that helps hope you've uh, taken something out of that um, I'm covering Irish racing at the moment to try and get people to understand that you can make money from Irish racing but it can be very dangerous as well and you've got to wait, wait for the right times this is the first time this year, and we're now at the end of April, that I'm even looking at Irish racing. Because the rest of the year, the liquidity was too poor, it was too dangerous, it's just not worth it. So, let's see what we do. So, more Irish racing. Got a lane low on rapid response. So, we'll see how that goes. And if we can get a few ticks through here, you can see... Pre-race liquidity was okay. Market seems to be moving about. There seems to be a constant flow of bets. Um, so it's just a case of whether we can now see an opportunity to get our money free quickly and safely. I would go on here at about threes, but all this money on the um, backside was holding it up. So we want to be in and out quick like that, essentially. Same we didn't get our full stake match, just part of it, but at least we know we're ahead of the queue now, if we want to keep it in. I've seen so many odds on favourites get turned over, so I'm very cautious. I'm going to get matched up here. We've been a bit greedy. Right, we'll cut the greed out and just try and get that out. That's it. Looking at the race time, and work out how much time we've actually got in this race. Quite mad. So this is not on favourite, it's in front, but the second runner is coming down in price. That's people's match read, race reading skills. Looking, that if you look, it's just running better. We certainly missed an opportunity on that one. You gotta be careful, I don't wanna go in now because if the bleeder was to fall, we'd get screwed. Just get all our money back out and move on. 
Cool. See what I mean? So that nearly fell in. And if it had, that's why you don't want to try and lay what you think, uh, at a big price, what you think is a loser, because funny, funny, funny things gone in horse racing. And, uh, you know, I've seen horses just run into the, just in the train or whatever, and just literally run it into the rail and stuff like that before we lose the race and just pull up for no reason. Fall at last fences. So, you know, if you were going to do anything, you're better off to actually lay at 101. Um, but yeah, three pound thirty-four. That was okay. There was opportunities in that race, so I'm a bit disappointed. I'm honest with you that I didn't earn more. But it is what it is, you know. I feel that was all pretty safe. I could have got a bit more than any May. I, that did trading quite low, and that scared me for a bit. But I don't know why I was worried about it. I saw the opportunity. I didn't take it. And look how low that did actually trade. I don't think it was ever in front. It was always behind. It just looked like it was running better at one point, I suppose. So but anyway, let's move on. I'm watching that money there. I'm watching what I can do on this runner, but you can see there's not a lot of cash in the market, so not many people want to lay it. Which means that could shoot in price pretty easily if you're a backer. I'd be interested in backing. Up at sixes maybe. If we'd backed at sixes, you can see that's probably gonna come in. I would imagine it would touch four at some point. I'm just not a backer. Still a long way to go in this race as well. Quite nuts that this has come in so much already. I know it's running well. Well, up there near the front, but, you know. Still in price. We're not even halfway through the race yet. I'd call that a market overreaction, wouldn't you? I would lay it, but I don't like laying odds on. I don't know why I should do. It's quite profitable. That's the plan ahead trades. So obviously I can cancel it off, but I've got the queue position at 4.1. I would have gone in at fours, but there's 70 quid there already in, in front of me. I'm mean, closes off, and we're out. Don't matter who wins now. Look at that, 8.25, oh, 8.26, sorry, lay in the winner. Timing is everything. It's all about. Quick take down 25. And we're out and that would do that is our profit done and dusted let's just clean off for as much as we can so there you go seven pound 81 uh on one runner literally one big trade to 25 ticks it was at a lower price we didn't get to, sorry but we did get 25 ticks on one 
but it was at the right time, right time in the race. Using the race timer makes us money at the time. Race timer is so cheap, it costs hardly anything, and it, that pays for a third of the cost of the race timer in one hit. And um, one little save at the bank, which will make you hundreds of times, will pay for it 10 times over. Why don't you get yourself a copy of the race timer? Your geek's toy, trader, and you're trading in play, you need it. No two ways about it. Anyway, just move. So you can see all this money backing up. That's why I'm hesitant here. I'm, I'm watching the price, the money coming in. Probably would have been all right, but you know, yeah, we would have got much better sides of the book. But I weren't 100% sure. If you're not 100% sure, why do it? Oh, well, it's not worth the time to go wrong. Yeah, because it's not worth the times it goes wrong. Even if you get it right four times out of five times out of ten, it's the five times you get it wrong that's totally gone out in price. It's going to screw you over in the long run. Price has gone out massively. I didn't, I wanted to know that at the time, that's the thing. What you've got to consider. It's a long old race this as well. So we didn't get fully much there, we did get fully much in the end. And the rest, there you go. <clears throat> so I think this is where this price wants to sit. I could be wrong that I say it and it goes right against us, but it is turning into a two horse race for sure. Also got my finger over the X key because if that front runner favourite was to fall, we could be in a bit of trouble here. Taking any risks, being a bit greedy here to be fair. So there's a tenner. That's a quarter of your bank for a little bit of scalping. That's why I trade in play. This is why I only need a small bank. £14.45 from a bank I started with 50 quid. I have actually been taking money out. Now, I've, I've made about 50 quid already today, but I've been taking money out, as we always do. It's below 70 quid, and I've just made 14 45 That's like nearly a, what, a quarter, third of my bank? Nine, well, fourth to a fifth of my bank. 
in one single, no danger, no danger, no problem, easy peasy. Do what I do. You don't need a big bank to trade, you just need to be smart. Don't take no risks. Wait for the right opportunities, wait for the right races, and you'll make money. Punch Town, more Irish racing. Got a little uh, low in lay position on Ha Thor, who's trading like quite low. Got to keep an eye on a favourite though, because that could really bugger me up if the favourite falls. So we've got to cancel it off. Got my finger over the executor. Do that if need be. In the meantime, we'll see if we can scalp out a few bit of cash as well. So I'm just putting myself in favourable positions at the moment. In positions where I believe are good value for money. We may not get picked up, but we're getting very good value if we do. What did it actually trade into, Heldor? I knew it was going to trade in low. I think it did better than I expected. I mean, we could have made a bit of cash there. And you probably didn't notice, but I was hovering over there ready to take uh, a smaller profit or even a small loss around this area. Is what I was, I was looking at at one stage. And I was ready, ready to click. But then I could just see what was going on with the race. And I'm, 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 Rather than, you, know, you could see El Fabo coming up and you could see a door like falling back and so I actually cancelled the closing position. Don't recommend it because horses can come back, but I was ready again to click on a break even position should it happen. But you could see that this is safe and at this point you're just laughing. You're laughing at 49 quid. Anyway, let's move on. Next race. Not a lot of money in the market. Would be, wouldn't it? Just put that 40 quid in there. They've so lowered me exit just because I need to get it out. Oh, come on. How many times does it take to get your bloody money matched? Quite a few. <sighs> Liquidity's dropping off. In play liquidity's dropping off for sure. On this race anyway, compared to others. And the rest, there you go. Six quid of one trade. Don't when you don't quite get matched like that. Come on, Dawson City, pick up. Oh well, seventeen pounds fifty-six. A nice little bit of scalping.
bit of pre-race trading. I think this horse is going to come in. Don't do a lot of pre-race, but you know, when you see an opportunity, you might as well take it. So it's a waiting game, as always. We're we're in very early. Look, six minutes to go. So it's only a hundred grand match yet. So I'm going to sit there and. Wait, I want to get half my stake out just to sort of um, move that X out. And I'm ready to get out at 390 if I have to. Problem is, it's just market noise, you know. Um, I'm going to lower that a bit more, in fact. I do think this is going to come in. I really do. So who says I don't trade pre-race and who says that I don't back? Oh, look at that. Bit of market noise. Just market noise is what you got to consider. It's 500 quid there. Let's hope it's not real. So I'm getting myself in these positions where I'm getting a good Q entry. So... If it comes down to me, we're going to get match quick. If I can get 25 quid out of there, that would be lovely because then I can let the other 25 quid ride uh, for a little bit with the exit up higher. But if we don't get match, then we're going to have to consider getting back out of 3.9 if I've got this wrong. I, mean, I am almost tempted to take it out a little bit lower. I wish I'd kind of taken it out of 3.65 now, but I hate market noise. That's why I don't um, trade pre-race. still think it's going to come in. Obviously, if it does break the ball, then we'll have to get out, but I just can't see it. <clears throat> the bets haven't even started coming in yet, because we're like four minutes before. So if I can get that down there, then we're laughing. But you see the second favourite is going out in price, which is going to push us in. Oh, here we go, look. Just hope that's just a bit of market noise. I just can't see it. This just looks like the best horse in the race. It's got to come in for me. And I, like I say, I wish I'd gone a little bit. I'm going to pop that up there. Just It's only half a mistake. I'm in for 50, so... There we go, now is it getting going? We've got to take that off. So now we've moved that exit a little bit higher. And let's move that down to fibers. We'll take another tenner out down here. And that is just literally. I learned this from Calm Berry, by the way, so thanks, Calm, for this little tip, trick getting your money out so you're pushing the green figure up all the time so if I could get matched for another 10 down here I'm going to push that up another tick, a couple of ticks so if it does go wrong it should still leave me in profit it's the calm berry special this one she hasn't actually traded down there yet and they probably will bounce back up and down because you're going to get market noise we'll get the video on very slightly very quickly So, now when I've looked at this horse, everything is pointing to it, all the, all the um, tipsters are tipping it, um, the jockey's doing well, uh, the trainer's doing well, um, the owner's doing well, so it's just like, it's just, to me, it's like the obvious kind of one that people, not necessarily the obvious winner, but the obvious one that people can put their money on. Because to me, everything else is doing rubbish. And you look at the other, well, these aren't really moving, but I'd like to see them move out a bit. So you can see that's pushed right up now. So where we put our closing position, I can't see it breaking the free, but if we could get down there for six pound for that last 22 quid, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Whether it will come in that much, I don't know. But I'm going to take the little gamble on the price moving that far. I can always get it out sooner, obviously. Um, or move a bit more out to push that price up, but now it's moving quite back up to 4.5. I just can't see it. So it looks like we're probably going to take a profit here. 
regardless, but whether we get our six pound fifty four, another question. But we do know that it was only seventeen pound in front of us. So if it does dip down to where we are, um, then we're we're first in the queue for that money. This is this is why I don't like it. You see this market you know, noise where it moves up and down, up and down. Um, I like in play trading because it's so much quicker, if that makes sense. I don't like being in the markets for long periods of time. But this one I just couldn't turn down, it just looked too obvious. Like I say, I'm not sure whether I'll get that. I would imagine we'll get at least a fiver. But we just need to see, you see that money piling in now. Still a minute to go, so let's get the sound on. They're saying we want to hear them bigging a the horse up as well. So the second favourite's going out. It's Amy Deborah. So I actually was thinking about laying this low in this race. I might have been a bit greedy, so I'm going to go up there for the fiver. I think. Alright, we may not get it. This is close off. We'll close the position off. But there you go, a little bit of pre race trading there for £4.14. Low stress. I was going to get out for £6. I get it. Was it a £3 twit? £3.20, I think? We'll see if the price does dip down to that or not. Just out of interest now. But we're closed off for the £4.14 profit. Or well, £4.14 if it wins, £4.15 if it loses. Uh, this Amy, Amy the the mods, however you pronounce it, um, I was thinking about laying this low because it's um, it's got an anonymity, anonymity. Can you say that? Where it's um, it hasn't won that many races, but it's traded in low quite a few times. I think it's won like three races or something, and it's traded in low like nine times or something. So. Uh, to 20% of his SP, so I was thinking about doing that, but because there's so much backing on it, I'm more concerned that it might actually win, and I normally ask to go for 100 ticks to really maximise my profit, and I don't feel comfortable doing it. So, um, I'm not sure on that one, but we'll see if we can scab out a few ticks. We've got two masks, four furlong, hunt chase, so hopefully we'll end up with more than 414 in the bank afterwards. Obviously, if it does go wrong, I'll go 414 to lose. Not really a way to look at it, but you know what I mean. So, will it do it? Will it? Would it have got down there or not? Like I say, if we see 30, 35 pound max, three point three two five, I would have picked it spot on. But I just chipped in there. Could have, like I say, could have hung on a bit longer. Could have got a few more ticks. Let's get the sound on and see what we can do in play. Don't look like it would have quite made it, but I won't far off the mark. And like I say, all I looked at is just all the indicating factors. The trainer's doing well, the jockey's doing well, um, the owner's doing well, and all the tipsters have tipped it. So therefore, you think, like, the punters, the actual people, whether it wins or not, I don't know, but all the punters, obviously, are going to be looking at those and backing it. So we would have got matched if we'd gone in play, but that's that's a naughty thing to do. I'm an in-play trader, but you don't take a pre-race trade in play unless you know what you're doing. That's, that is sinful. Right, let's get some ticks out of the in-play market. So, looking at this, not a lot of money queuing up. Money, markets are flying about. Sometimes when there's a lot of money, you, the markets will move quicker. As long as there's a lot of money being turned over, if that makes sense. They can flick around all over the place. But you've got to also consider that means they, if they go against you, they can go massively against you. So you've got to take, make sure you're taking those profits. So Amy Demos, I was going to lay at 2.3 with 100 tick offset. So that means 2.3 would have been laying down here. And 100 tick offset, it would need to have traded afterwards around about here. 
8.6. Be interesting to see if it happens or not. Well, we're early on, I am looking at scalping in play, but the reason I'm hesitant at the moment, you can see this money is not getting turned over. But we had 176 quid there, and that there's been hardly anything in that whole period there. That worries me. Nine quid there, how quick is that going to go? That 30 pound there, that certainly not getting matched. There's money in front of it, it's been cancelled, never got matched. 56 quid. I think the 50 quid got cancelled rather than matched there. So you've got to be careful in these situations for sure. So now there's a bit of movement, I'm going to have a look at it. Tend to get more movement the closer you get to the finish line anyway. But obviously we don't want to be in the business end of the race, that's, that's sinful. It's like a pre-race trader going in play being in the business end of the race. Gonna cancel it off for now. Again, we're looking at this, look, and we're looking at the money turned over. So that's quite a larger figure, I guess, 256. But, I'm watching these figures that they get matched, not they get matched, not very quick, are they? It's dangerous. Gonna hang on for a minute. I would go in if the money was being turned over, I'd be straight in there at full free, but I'm gonna go in now. So we got matched pretty quick there, but it wasn't for a lot of cash. I do want a few more ticks in this. I feel this is riskful, so the bigger the risk you take, the bigger the reward I personally want. Where are we? Race timer. It's cool, it's going out. Come on, matches up. And the rest. See, that is, I think we're going to get matched, but I'm not going to hang on so much longer. I'm going to drop down the price. And the rest. So this is the problem when it's low liquidity. Look how long it took me to get my money out. And because of that reason, I'm not going to go in anymore. I would wait a little bit longer normally, but I'm not going to. Amy Jim Hodge is the one I was going to lay at 2.3, don't forget. I changed my mind because of the low price. It's got to 2.56. Will it get to 2.3? Do you know what? I'm still tempted. I'm still tempted. Looks like I was a little bit out on the price. We could still get matched. So yeah, we got that one right as well-ish, but 2.3 we got wrong, um, 2.7 is another price, 2.6 around these figures I often go in at, 2.3 is a little bit greedy, so we could have got matched on the lane low on that one, we could have made some money there, but there you go, a little bit of money on pre-race and a little bit of money in play. So I just thought I'd show you this, I'm not showing off anything like that, but I just wanted to show what is possible. I started £50 bank today um, and I've done pretty well. I've been withdrawing money out all day. Uh, when I say withdrawing money out, I mean putting it in my poker wallet so it's not a risk. And I've, kept, I've been lowering myself down to sort of below £100 on many occasions. But um, not showing off anything like that, but I just want to show what, it, what is possible from just starting with £50, £186.91 uh, today. And if you look, 
um, at the market. You can say 100% profit. Um, I do have a couple of scripts at the moment. Um, for example, the thoughts can pay there. There's a lot of videos that I'm not showing today. I them all, didn't record any sounding thing. I wasn't planning on doing a video, but I just thought I'd show you. You don't need a big bankroll. If you get a good day and the market's run your way, you can make like a fair bit of profit. Um, and that's what it can look at like, just 50 pounds. So that is like literally three and a half times my bank. Um, plus, obviously still having my bank on top of that. 186 pounds, 91 profit um, of just 50 quid. So yeah, follow what I'm doing. Just don't take no risks, and all I do, I've been, I haven't made a lot of money this week, to be fair. Um, it's been a little bit, sort of, waiting, uh, I can't remember what it was yesterday, now, 70 quid yesterday, something like that, 80 quid, something like that, 50 quid the day before, couple of, and after that I had a break, I think I did a little look the day before that and only had a couple of quid, and I just had a two week break. The last two days, there's not been a lot to pay, and um, sometimes there isn't, but, you just have to sit and wait for patient because that makes up for a crack day yesterday. I'm quite happy. To be honest with you, I'm happy if I make 50, 50 70 quid a day. That, that would do me. I don't need much more money than that. That would, that would, that would sort me out. So, uh, 186 pound 91 to show you what is possible without having a huge bank. So, if you like what I'm doing, please hit like, please hit subscribe. If you've got any questions, queries, whatever, I have got a little bit of a backlog of emails, so I do apologise to you if I've not got back in touch with you yet. I will get back in touch with you, just because just I've had a little bit of a holiday, I will get back in touch with everyone. Um, emails first, then I'll get in touch with everyone on the YouTube channel. Um, so I thank you if you have commented or have got in contact, and please don't think that I've forgotten about you. But yeah, if you've got any questions, queries, if you want me to talk about any particular, particular subjects when I'm trading, cover anything, anything you're not sure of, Ask me, request it, because if I think it's reasonable, I'll literally spend an afternoon talking about whatever the subject is and, um, and show you how to do it. Anyway, best of luck in the markets, and bye-bye for now. Introducing Geek's Toy Trading Software, the fastest, most customizable, and most popular software for betting and trading on Betfair and BetDAC. Designed by professional traders for you. Key features include unlimited desktop settings and the ability to create custom profiles to suit every user's needs. Unbeatable speed, real-time prices and one-click betting. Unique management of multiple markets. You can bet or trade on multiple sporting events simultaneously. Support for eight languages. Context-driven help on every window. Darching and bookmaking. Training mode. Advanced charting. Enhanced navigation. Support for Betfair coupons. Stop loss and more. Geek's Toy. Possibly the best Betfair and BetDAC trading software in the world.